Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, church. Thank you, all those who've been watching. Many times those who've been supporting in terms of sharing the message. We need to grow this channel of ours. It's the only space we have for now, the Heavenly Intelligence Network. We have so many people all over the world, but please help to subscribe. But also send a message to somebody, a friend of yours, to make sure that they are always on or they share the message. Sharing is very important. In the days of Jesus, he had to walk miles. In the days of the apostles, they did the same thing, suffering tragedy on the sea and different uh, huge forests, and the gospel spread. But as the time evolves, as Daniel says in the later days, people will be wiser, wisdom will increase, knowledge will increase. You know, among the knowledges that have increased is the, media, the knowledge and the technology of media. Today, I can sit here and transmit to the whole world. So, your only way and participation in this, in terms of walking, the journey to preach, is to share. In your archive of information and contacts, you have so many people. Just share, no matter whether people listen or not listen, but share it. If you're watching this any time and at any given time of point of time, whether after this broadcast or after a few years, share it. Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. As I share this topic, meaning in this moment in this season when we remember the resurrection of Jesus, death, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, Father God, that the church is moving on. And I know no matter what happens to the church, if the founders survived the scourges and all the lashes from the Roman punishers, it will survive so many hiccups. It shall survive a lot of challenges and hurdles. Be glorified, O King of glory, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Uh, we have just celebrated Easter. Not even Easter, celebrated the birth and, uh, sorry, the suffering, the ministry, the ministry, the suffering, the death and resurrection of our Christ. It's about now 2,400 years, 2,024 years since Jesus left earth. The church is moving on. Today I'm coming with a topic entitled, The Church is Moving On. When you look at what is happening today, a lot of challenges facing the church. And so many others in immoral, immoral decadence in the church, or moral decadence in the church. I mean, the external attacks. Some countries, you cannot be free to air this, this, this uh, transmission. Some countries, you have to have a permit even to share the gospel. Like in China, the state church, there's a church in China, two types of churches. Church number one is a state church. State church means that whatever someone you preach, it has to be censored by government. That means that is a married church to the state. Then there's also another church in the hidings. In fact, it's estimated that it has over 30, 350, 300 something plus. I last heard about that two years ago. That the members that are in a secret church, there are about 300 members there. Every nation on earth has the church there. In North Korea, there are churches there, but they cannot be free. But the church is moving on. In Middle East, many places where the Islamic states are, run, are, are reading, the church is not free. Of course, the Arab Emirates, Emirates church can be free to the foreigners, maybe. And it has to be gazetted in one place, but also with multiple monitoring. So everywhere in the world, even in the Amazon, the church is there. It may be a small portion of church, but the kingdom of God is there. So here in Africa, the church is free, free of expression, 
freedom of worship. But again, the challenge is the, the, internal, conf the internal challenges of the church, which means the internal weaknesses, the intrigues among leaders, the fighting against each other, criticizing, pulling down and raising others, uh, pride, immorality, and all sorts of things. So, church has multiple challenges from different sides. But all above all those things, the church is moving on. I come here this week, on today, to Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, to share with you some good news about the church. Here in Uganda, it's been really bad. Church has been in the media almost every month. Certain and different incidents coming from the clergy, attacking the clergy. Not only in the Pentecostal church, but also in Anglican church, even in Catholic church, but majorly in the Pentecostal church. Pentecostal here in Uganda has really done a great work. Some churches were dormant and boring and like not moving, but the Pentecostal church, Evangelical church came here and caused a lot of impact in the Anglican church. The things that used to happen in the Pentecostal, which the Anglicans used to abuse and even despise, now they're doing it, even in Catholic Church. Even Islam is also shaping up because of the Pentecostal movement. But the Pentecostal movement has really suffered a lot of ridicule due to the fact that the enemy is attacking from inside. To the Arab world, nations like Russia, to those countries that are really closed up to the gospel, China, North Korea, and other countries, the gospel, is the church is being attacked from outside. Some people have to die. You have to be imprisoned. But to the free world like Africa, America, Europe, even in Europe now, it may seem to be like there's an open door, but Europe is literally closing down on God and even America. The choices that are being done now, the policies that are passing now, they are not, you know, uh, promoting the church. It is oppos oppos opposing the church. But relatively still the peace and the freedom of worship is there, there in those countries. So the churches in Africa, Europe, the America, the West, the, rest, the, the Europe includes the, ten, the nations in Europe, the West represents those nations, Canada, Australia, uh, New Zealand, uh, America, and all those. The gospel, the church is being attacked from within. Each passing day, there is a leader who is messing up. There is somebody who is compromising the gospel. So these are multiple, two multiple faces kind of attack, the external and the internal. We'll share that scripture on Tuesday. Men's day when Paul talks about the enemies inside and the enemies outside. Praise the Lord. But again, I like the scriptures, Mike. That nothing happens in the to the church that Jesus did not say. Everything that we see, whether it is morality, whether it is a, a external attack from demonic forces, Lucifer's spirit attacking the church, Jezebel, it is written. And because they are written, for those who read the Bible and who are critically and analytically analyzing the scriptures, it brings joy to us. Where the, on the other side, people are crying. So, Pastor, Apostle Bunjo, I'm coming here to give you some good news and maybe to give you a direction of prayer. Jesus mentioned uh, this in Matthew chapter 11, verse number 10 says truly among but number number nine number 11 11 11 matthew truly i tell you among those born of women there has not risen anyone greater than john the baptist yet who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he now from the days of john the baptist until now, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. From the days of John the Baptist until the present time. You see, it was written 2,000 plus years, but this scripture still speaks today. <laughs> the word of God is like bread, fresh bread. It says, let me read it again from the Amplified Bible. 
and from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, which is 2014, sorry, 2024, the kingdom of heaven, which is the church, has endured violent assault, has endured violent assault. By the grace of God, I might take this for the whole month to share about how the church have survived. But now it says, since when John, John the Baptist was born, who was the forerunner of the New Testament? John the Baptist was the forerunner of the New Covenant. But it says, from his time till now, the church, the kingdom of heaven, has endured violent assault. We shall talk about that. What are the all sorts that have happened to the church, starting with Jesus, the apostles, down the century? I will share that. And the violent man says it by force, as a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. What you get? Meaning, the church. And the kingdom of God has not just arrived on a silver plate, on a straight lord. There has been torture. There's been anguish, sorrow, deaths, immorality, confusion, internal conflicts and criticism. But a church is still moving on. And Jesus also mentioned this. Maybe we shall come back to this verse on Wednesday. Where the dangerous, the church has been suffering all sorts or assaults. Has been suffering violent attacks. And Jesus mentioned about this, by the way, himself. These are the words of Jesus, not Matthew. John chapter, he talks about that in the world is tribulation. Chapter 16. Let me read John chapter 16 by the grace of God. John chapter number 16. John 16. And the Bible talks about that. Jesus did not promise uh, a, peaceful, a peaceful church. Why I will share with you why the church has to suffer all sorts. One of the reasons is because it is, a, it is a traversing. It is it is it's executing a kingdom in a kingdom. It's like the challenge that happened to the Jews. Getting the Jews out of Egypt wasn't easy. There were ten gods who were holding on to the children of Israel, not to give them their liberty, their freedom, and identity. The church is not heaven yet. In heaven, there's no, there's no suffering, there's no fighting. The church builds a kingdom in a really kingdom. Nobody builds a kingdom in a kingdom. If a nation attacks us in Uganda, the UPDF will attack them. The reason why nations build those arsenals is because they fear attacks. Same way, the world was sold to the devil by Adam. And now Jesus comes, dies on the cross, and rises again, rises again and leaves us with power to establish the kingdom of God here. On Friday, I'll read you a scripture that talks about Daniel's. Chapter 3, when that stone grew, that stone that became was small and it went and grew and covered the whole earth. That stone was Jesus. That stone was the kingdom of God. An example, I'm Uganda. Mm -hmm. I have my tribe, I have my religion, I was a Muslim. But when I received Christ, the kingdom of God came in my life in 1982. I had to, to lose many things that I liked. I no longer practice Uganda. I'm not a pure Uganda now. Because the certain things which as a Muganda, as a, a born again, I cannot do. Here in Buganda, when you produce twins, you need to do demonic uh, ceremonies. I refuse them. When the king is passing, you need to, to, to lie down and, and lie down as if you are worshipping God. I cannot do that. The certain things in introductions that in, I have done three introductions in my house, but certain things I refused. And I became a rebel to the Baganda. So, same with the Bagisu, same with the religion. I was a Muslim. Receiving Christ, I had to deny Islam, not because Islam is bad religion, but because now this other kingdom I've refused is dominating. 
That's why there's that suffering when you receive Christ. Not suffering to suffer, but because you are kind of introducing new laws in another land. That's why salvation is not something like it's easy. You can become a Catholic, you can become an Anglican or Muslim, and it's okay. But becoming a Christian is a battle every day because you are fighting with, with ideologies. Some, are that, some of them are scientific. Some of us took some sciences at school, <clears throat> studied about things, which some of our teachers teach them for purposes of teaching, but they don't believe in them. So we are in the secular world, but yet we need to establish a kingdom here. So I've been trying to share with you the church will still move on because Jesus prophesied about the movement of the church despite the, the, the abuses, abuses and the challenges facing it. John, as we finish, chapter 16. Bible says what? Our toy is saying we are talking about the church is moving on. That's our topic. It may, it may result in the book, never, never, you never know. Jesus says, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace and confidence. In the world you you have you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration but be of good cheer take courage be confident certain and acquitted for i have overcome the world i have deprived i have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you i will bring scriptures from the mouth of jesus and from the mouth of the apostles how the church will face both external and internal challenges but will keep moving let me say this an airplane will have to fight will have to fight the air pockets and the winds to go where it's supposed to go that's how the church is here in uganda we have been winning upheavals in the clergy but it will settle it will settle because it was the first time when the church fought each other or had disagreements that's what i said internal conflicts have always been attacking the church even outside but you as a believer, it's a special word for you, Uganda, Europe, everywhere. Many people say, oh, Christians are compromising. Denominations are turning, you know, atheistic and liberal. Never mind. Some denominations will not be the, it is not going to be the first time. It was happened with Martin Luther. When the Catholic Church became dominant and the teaching of the Catholic Church become more, was more authoritative than the teaching of the Bible. And one man, the man who brought, brought a great reformation in Europe, after which even the industry, industrial revolution, revolution started, Martin Luther. Hey, God is calling in the Martin Luthers, the John Bunjos, <laughs> the Micah, the, uh, the Abrahams, uh, the Moseses, the Jesuses, the Peters, who are going to shape the world. Don't cry and say, Lord, bring Peter again, Jesus again. No, 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 you are here. You are the church. You are the kingdom. You will survive. For some young people who say, oh, my body is, is having challenges, you know, sexuality and all that. Hey, the challenges of stimulation, the challenges of lust in the body, the lust of eyes and the boast of life will never cease. But inside of us, when Jesus died from the dead, he died, he went to heaven and promised the, the, the disciples the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit now you and I received is a spirit that hovered over the waters in the Old Testament and life came. Spirit that came upon Jesus and was able to do work for three years. And that's the same spirit that he caused him to rise from the dead. That same spirit is in us. I am praying for you that God will give you strength, give you Uganda strength. Instead of crying and mourning, let's go to God and say, Lord, I am ready to clear the mess, fight the external and internal battles. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord encourage you. Everybody that is healed, sick, may the Spirit of God heal you. Those that are confused, may the Spirit of God bring clarity and understanding. I wish you very well. And I pray that this week, as on this, is, this ministry, this teaching has started, was, is birthed today on Easter Monday. And I know it will go for some time. May the Lord bless you. And uh, later we shall bring a book out of it. So I pray that pray for me and pray for us. If you're watching, please, don't 
forget to subscribe. Click that red button. You become a member of this great movement. Hey! And if you share, click on the button of sharing, share to others. In your, in your phone book, contacts. And also, click to that bell to remind you anytime we are coming at this time at 1, up to 1.30. God bless you. Thank you, Mike, everybody in the mind, the microphone. And remember, we are having Bombo Festival in the 20 this year in December from 12th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. People are going to be gathering, young people are coming to Bombo. But also June, June 1st to be a Saturday, and um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we are going to be camping on this campus, Bombo, and be here for three days. And the theme is transformation. Be ye transformed. We want to see God in this season. In the midst of this catastrophe and challenges in Uganda, church, we are pre planning a day, June 1st, 2nd, 3rd. People will be camping here from Kampala, from different countries, to seek the Lord. God bless you.